Howdy, and welcome to Lee Reads, where I talk about the books I've been reading and enjoying lately. I just got a package, an anticipated release of mine that arrived today. Why are these cardboard boxes so awkward? It is The Bride of Death, a newly released adult fantasy. All I know about this book and the reason why I was excited to pre-order it and why I'm excited to start reading it now is that it comped Uprooted by Naomi Novik and it also comped Catherine Arden. There's lots of different elements in that that excites me. The writing of Naomi Novik and Catherine Arden, the folklore and myth that Catherine Arden uses, the imaginative worlds Naomi Novik has written. Also, I really, really enjoyed Uprooted and the plot. So any combination of that, I am here for it. In this village, there are tales of the Lord of Death. The main character is a girl from a small village who has grown up hearing these stories and keeping to herself and spending her time with her best friend. But her best friend starts acting strangely and then removes himself up to live in this isolated place and the rumor mill starts going wild that her friend may be possessed by demons perhaps even the Lord of Death. The main character knows she cannot defeat the Lord of Death without power, and she cannot gain power without becoming his bride. But to become queen of the underworld, she must complete three impossible tasks. So this has quite a mixture of different elements that I like. I like the main, char the main character that in order to save the things that they care about, self-sacrifices into the lion's den and then probably finds that things aren't quite as clear as they originally thought. Also, I just want to note, I don't know if my camera will focus on it, but the cover is gorgeous and it isn't too, too long. So I'm really hoping that I'll be able to read it through this week. Really, quick update. I'm at basically the 10% mark. The stage has been set. The writing really is reminiscent of Naomi Novik, a mixture of uprooted and spinning silver. It's set in Turkey or Anatolia in the time period where, they are, where there are clashes with the Romans and Christianity is interfacing with the older religions. Sorry, my husband is whistling. It's following this young girl, Zarin, who has been a bit strange. I don't really want to go into reasons why. We spend some time getting to know her and the situation that she's in. Her best friend in the world, the person she's closest to, the person that she can't imagine being without, winds up being, it seems, consumed by grief, goes and lives at this old manor at the top of the hill, and bad things start happening to the village and everyone thinks that he is possessed by a demon. Zarin is determined to heal him, try to bring back her friend, but we don't know if there's really anything of her friend left or not. I guess that we will find out, but it's very cold so far. I feel like this would be a great book to read in winter. It's also reminiscent of the Bear and the Nightingale series by Catherine Arden with this young girl who can kind of see the house spirits and see bits of the spirit world that other people can't see. And I'm really interested as how all of this is going to interface that world building and the plot that we have setting set out and this very interesting young woman now. She's 21 or 22 now when the story's really getting launched. So a little bit of a slow start building the story, but everything is very richly written. I love this sort of writing style. And I find myself wishing almost that this would be a standalone so it can be this great self-contained thing, but I guess we will find out as we read. Um, but for now, it is bedtime. Good morning. It's been a couple of days. There were some storms last night that were really close. There's like crazy close lightning and thunder. <sighs> so now it's definitely a, a post rain. Everything seems fresh and I just want to read books kind of day. It's my last update. I've 
I read a little bit at work and I'm almost to the halfway point. And the book started out really in the same vein as the books and the authors that it's comped on. There were there are strong elements that seem similar in the writing and the folklore and the setting and also in the immediate plot to those books. But, but lately it has really taken a turn into something that feels like itself, something that feels fresh, which I've also really enjoyed. And I'm not normally someone that really likes the you have to do three tasks. But the way that element is woven into the story and how the main character is interacting with the other contestants, I'm actually really enjoying. The other contestants feel fleshed out. The main antagonist of this story, I really, really don't like. Which is the point because this is a, a an entity that has taken over the body of someone the main character loves for their own purposes. So we're not supposed to like them, but I think that we're going to be going on quite um, a journey as we get to know that character better. Good morning, short update. I actually haven't made as much progress as I expected to have by this point because I haven't been reading as much over the, the past few days, but that's okay. It's not a race. I'm just going to be a little bit late putting up this video. So I'm still enjoying the story. The main character is starting to do something that is a pet peeve of mine. Don't get me wrong, I really like her and I like how she's responding to these challenges. But on the other hand, she can be a little aggravating in, in some way, but not enough, to, not enough to make me put the story down. And, but, but there is a, a small pet peeve with the writing where I hate to say it's telling, not showing, but the character will just express a feeling or the author will just state the nature of a relationship. I wish that there had been a little bit more time spent developing that because I don't believe it as much when you're just telling me this. You know, I would like to have seen some of this building and she hated him even more. It's like, okay, I don't really need you to keep telling me that she hates him. I need to like see some sort of proof of that. Just a little pet peeve of mine. Still enjoying the story though. We're at that point of the story where like tides are starting to change and so I could understand that being a hard part to, to get perfect from a writing standpoint. That's just me coming from someone who is a writer, you know, trying to get published. Like things are hard to do really well. It's just something I noticed because as I read, I also try to kind of think about it from a perspective. I'm gonna probably hang out here in my chair today and see if I can make more progress and maybe finish this up today. Okay, I finished. Uh, it's not that long of a book and the chapters read fairly quickly. It went in a direction I did not expect, which I think could be off-putting to some people and some people would really love. It just depends on what your expectations are with this story. So I would recommend keeping an open mind as you really get into it because as I mentioned before, it starts out as more of a familiar fairy tale type underworld story and then kind of deviates and becomes its own thing. One thing I think the author did really well is it, it primarily is set in the underworld. It deals with the master of death and the inhabitants of the underworld feel like they're not human. There's this creepy, different, almost horror-like aspect to the setting, which you would expect rather than just being humans in, a, in an underworld. And then to see how all of that impacts our main character and how she is affected by what she is experiencing and the people that she's meeting was very interesting and and different so that's what i mean by keeping an open mind and sort of experiencing where the story takes you because it may take you somewhere you didn't expect from that point of view i like the story i think it was well done for kind of where it was trying to get to. It's just not what I was expecting, but I just had to kind of let go and, and go with the flow and I'm glad I did. So just to summarize, very 
strong. Let me know if you're going to give this book a try or what you've thought if you already read it. And as always, don't forget to support your local library.